This is the new 2025 M5 MacBook Pro. This is the new base model Pro MacBook from Apple replacing the M4 from last year. Now there's not gonna be a whole lot of differences between the M4 and M5 version of this laptop, except for the chip, which there are some pretty good upgrades in that chip. But what I wanna do is go ahead and unbox it, take a look at it, do a full restore and set up from a time machine backup and just do some initial benchmarks to kind of see how this thing performs. Now the M5 only comes in a 14 inch version at this time. You can't get a 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M5. You can get it in silver or space black. I chose space black this time. And it starts at 1599 but it can go quite a bit higher. I did go ahead and actually upgrade the RAM to 24 gigabytes from the 16 that it comes with. So right now it comes with a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. The base model comes with 16 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. But again, I upgraded the memory to 24 gigabytes for 200. So it came out to $1,799. You can actually upgrade this all the way to 32 gigabytes of memory with four terabytes of storage and upgrade the display to the nano texture coating, which I have on my M4 Max MacBook Pro and I absolutely love. Inside the box, you're just gonna get some general paperwork. Inside the US, you're going to get a power adapter. Some places outside the US, you might not get the power adapter and you're going to get a MagSafe cable. Black if you get space black laptop and I think white if you get the silver. Let's peel off the paper and finally get to the main course here, which of course is the space black laptop. And yeah, I mean, besides the fingerprints that this thing collects, I really like the look of the space black. I just don't normally get it because I'm afraid of all the fingerprints and dust that is just gonna show all the time. If you have one of the space black laptops and you don't have that issue, let me know below because that's why I haven't kept one long-term is just because of that. But physically, there's essentially no difference or any difference that I can see between the M4 version and the M5 version. I mean, it's a sleek, powerful 14 inch laptop. It's pretty cool. On the inside, everything's gonna look basically the same as well, except a couple of keys have the icons moved around a little bit. So the icons are moved away from the center instead of pushed in, like on the command option and control. But other than that, it looks the exact same. I used Time Machine to back up my M4 Max MacBook Pro to this external enclosure. This is an OWC Express 1M2. This is the 40 gigabit version, but I also have the 80 gigabit version, which is super fast, but you need Thunderbolt 5 for that to work. So this one's gonna be just fine with Thunderbolt 4. Inside here, I have a rocket SSD of some kind. I can't remember, it's four terabyte disk, but this should make the uh, transfer pretty quick. So let's just go ahead and walk through the setup here. Select your language. Now select your country or region. And next, and now it's asking if I want to do a restore from a Mac, a time machine, or startup disk on this computer. We're going to choose that first option here. And accessibility settings, no, nothing. Now select your Wi-Fi network and enter your password. Looks like we actually need to complete a software update because I know my other Mac is running 2601. So if this one isn't running 2601 just yet, then it's gonna have an issue with the time machine backup. So we'll go ahead and do that update now. And we're back after about eight minutes. And right now it's asking for country and region again. Select yours and hit continue. Do you wanna transfer your data from a backup or a Mac? I do, continue. Accessibility, again, none for me. Wi-Fi again. A little information about data and privacy, continue. And now transferring data to your Mac. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my Thunderbolt 4 drive right here and give it just a moment to show up. Right now it's seeing my NAS, but we wanna actually do the restore from this external SSD right here. Tap on continue. And because this disk is encrypted, it wants my password. And now it wants me to select the disk again, I guess, and continue. So yes, I want to restore from I can select different options, but I wanna do my most recent one. So this morning at 6.30 a.m., uh, I guess Pacific, so 8.30 uh, Central Time, which is where I am, continue. Now it's going to look at the entire backup and give me an idea of how much storage space is going to be required. So depending on what you selected in your time machine or what you deselected or what you excluded from your time machine backup, these numbers are gonna be completely different. So for example, I deselected photos because I use iCloud Photos and I have the full originals on this computer so I don't need them on here. So other than that, all of your other files and settings should migrate over. Actually, I found a folder I don't need anymore or this one and network settings, I don't need those either, so I'm going to deselect that because there's some settings on the old computer that I don't need on this one. And once you're all set with what you're gonna migrate, go ahead and tap on continue. And now it's going to ask you to set a password on this computer for that user account that you're bringing over. So go ahead and set that password. Now terms and conditions, do you agree or not? If you don't agree, you probably should just return the computer. 
Uh, I have read them, sure, why not? And now the migration is going to take place and we'll see how long that takes to transfer what the 170 gigabytes or so that I, I selected. As it goes through the migration, you'll see the numbers, the transferred files and the amount of remaining time and the speed go up and down a whole bunch. None of it really means anything. So you have no idea how long it's gonna take. You just gotta wait. All right, the migration completed. So that took about nine minutes, which is not too bad. And now we should be able to just go ahead and log in. I'll go ahead and disconnect this external drive right now. It's asking us if we want to automatically update the Mac. I prefer to just update on my own, so I will download, but not install them automatically. Again, no accessibility changes, and for whatever reason, for a third time, select your Wi-Fi network. Now you need to agree to privacy information, tap continue, and now sign into your Apple ID, which it should have already pulled over, but for some reason, it didn't. Agree to iCloud. Apple wants to know if you'd like to share anonymous analytics with Apple or third parties if you have application crashes or system crashes. I generally do that. I don't see any downside to them having that information. So tap on continue. And you wanna enable screen time, which I do not. And do I wanna use Apple Intelligence? Sure, I'll use Apple Intelligence because why not? And so right now it's telling us about summary notification or, or summarizing notifications, how it will kind of group them together and summarize them. So we can choose which ones we want to summarize. Do we want news and entertainment to be summarized? Uh, other applications, so go ahead and select the ones that you would like to have summarized and click next. Do you wanna enable Siri? I'll just go ahead and set that up later. With the new version of FileVault, I believe Apple will not store the encryption keys for you as a backup in iCloud anymore just to keep your data private. So what's gonna happen is when I turn on FileVault to encrypt this SSD, it's actually going to give me a key that I then need to copy and keep somewhere. That way, if I ever forget my login password to this computer, I can use that encryption key as a backup to unlock the computer and get my files if I need them. So if we tap on turn on, there you're gonna see that we have been given a key. Now again, this key, Apple won't have access to it, and if you lose this key and you forget your password to your Mac, you're kinda SOL. You're not gonna be able to get into this thing. So make sure you copy it, write it down, print it, store it in a safe, whatever you think you need to do. Now we can enable Touch ID, which I definitely wanna use. Just go ahead and place your finger on there and follow the usual Touch ID steps that you've known since the iPhone 5S. Now we wanna get the outside of the fingerprint, give us a little bit more leeway in how we place our finger and continue. Do we wanna set up Apple Pay? You can go ahead and select Next and then you'll have to enter the CCID or the security codes on the back of your cards to add them, which I'll go ahead and do later. Do you wanna choose light mode, dark mode, or automatic, where it will automatically switch to dark mode at night? I prefer light mode, so continue. And there we are, we're done with the setup of the M5 MacBook Pro and all of our information that we selected to transfer or migrate over should be on this computer and ready to go. So now I need to enable find my Mac, I guess. So enter your iCloud password or computer password. So I'm not sure what is going on here, but it looks like nothing actually transferred over. So. None of my settings are correct. My wallpaper, my dock, looks like the applications are missing. And if I go home, it looks like none of my files and things were brought over. So I don't know what the heck is going on. Um, something didn't happen. The menu bar is missing the time. I don't see control center or anything up here at the top. Like something bizarre uh, happened. So this is strange, this has never happened. So I guess what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and do a reset of the computer and redo the restore from Time Machine and see if everything works as it should. So to do the reset, I'm going to go to General and then go to Transfer and Reset and re Erase All Content and Settings. Enter your password. Uh, I don't need to do a backup of this computer. Yes, Touch ID is gonna be removed. Erase All Content and Settings. So now it's gonna do a full reset and we'll see what happens on this go around. All right, so this process seemed to go a lot smoother. Once it did the restore from Time Machine, I wasn't asked the whole same string of questions and entering Wi-Fi again. I'm just now to the login screen, which should be correct. So hopefully I log in and now all of my stuff is actually here. Maybe, this is taking a while. What's going on here? Now, for some reason, I'm getting a software update complete, which I didn't do any software updates since I reset the computer. That's strange. 
Now it's asking for Wi-Fi, so that's not good. Because I've already set the Wi-Fi since I reset the computer and all the Wi-Fi information is still saved in iCloud. And now it's just stuck here, spinning, trying to connect. It keeps refreshing the Wi-Fi signals, but it's not actually connecting. So what the heck is going on with this computer? Okay, finally, so now it wants me to enter my Apple ID information. At least it knows what Apple ID I'm using this time. And welcome, it says. So fingers crossed. I can't really cross my fingers anymore, but fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. All right, all my stuff is here. And it looks like I got my desktop picture. I have my dock and I even reopened all the applications that I had open on the other computer. That's weird. All this spacing is a little bit off, but I need to fix that. Um, let's see, make sure all the applications are here. And yeah, it looks like all my applications actually migrated over. So I don't know what that was all about where the first migration didn't actually migrate anything. And other than that, it looks like I'm finally set up. I need to fix this though. So because I usually have a lot of icons up here in the menu bar and the notch gets in the way, I use a little utility called menu bar spacing, which allows me to reduce the spacing of the menu bar items. So I usually set it to zero, which for some reason it's fighting me, but oh well, we'll see what happens. Maybe it's a bug with the new version of Tahoe. But anyway, I like to reduce the spacing between the icons so that they don't interfere or get blocked by the notch up top. So let's just go ahead and do a couple quick comparison tests to see how well the M5 performs. Now over here, I have the M3 MacBook Air. So the base model M3 MacBook Air versus the base model M5 MacBook Pro. We'll just go ahead and run a CPU benchmark right here and see what the performance looks like. And here's the results between the M3 and the M5 on the M3 MacBook Air, which of course does not have any internal cooling. Got a score of 2995 for single core and got about 30, more than 30% higher on the M5 with 4110 and the multi-score being 17,485 versus 12,010 on the M3 Air. When it comes to testing metal performance, the M5 has new neural accelerators on every one of the GPU cores, which should speed up a number of tasks with GPU and AI and other things. So you can see on the M5, we got a score of 76,000 versus 44,000 on the M3. Next up, I wanna do a local AI test using the app called Draw Things. This is a local image generation tool. You can download a bunch of different models. For this test, I'm going to be using Flux Step 1 dev um, and see how it goes. We have the same prompt down here on both of them. Basically a sci-fi robot serving coffee with the you know kind of 70s modern look. So we'll just go ahead and start on both of them and we'll go ahead and start a timer and see how fast these complete. So the M5 completed this task in four minutes and 13 seconds. We are nearly 10 minutes into the test and we still have a ways to go on the M3. You can see that it's just hammering the GPU, which makes me wonder, I mean, it looks like the neural accelerators inside all of the GPU cores in the M5 are actually really doing something. So that's pretty cool. And just to clarify, the M3 MacBook Air has an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU versus the 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU on the M5. And there we have it. The M3 has finally finished with a time of about 15 minutes or more than three times slower than the M5. So that's pretty darn impressive as far as the M5 goes. Now, what does that really mean in your regular, regular everyday usage of your laptop? Well, probably not much. I mean, the M5 is gonna run pretty much just like the M4 did in your regular everyday tasks, whether it's surfing the web, sending email, doing work, Photoshop, video editing, things like that. Well, actually photo editing, I am definitely going to test because I had an issue with the M3 version of the MacBook Pro when it came to video editing. So that's coming up very soon. But should you upgrade from an M4 MacBook Pro? Probably not. Should you upgrade from an M3? Maybe, depending on what you need. If you're looking to do AI stuff, especially local AI stuff on your laptop, then the M5 is probably going to produce a pretty big boost for you to get your stuff done. Other than that, what do you guys think about the brand new base model M5 MacBook Pro? Is it something you're looking to get? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you're interested in this video right over here, you should definitely check it out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.